there's a Hindu deity called Krishna. Some thousands and thousands of years ago, baby Krishna was found to be eating mud. His stepmom made him open his mouth so she could get him to spit it out. She saw in there the entire universe, different dimensions, black holes and whatnot. She was overwhelmed by the whole thing and fainted. Some 30 odd years ago, when I was like two or something, my mom found me eating mud in a corner of our apartment. But when she looked inside my mouth, she only saw mud, cavities and a few loose milk teeth. She was super annoyed and smacked me in the head. A few days ago, I came across a group of people who are into geophagy, a fancy word for what baby Krishna and baby me were caught doing by our respective mums, eating soil. This group is into documenting the practice of eating soil, which apparently is not so uncommon. This group has members from across the world. They have set up a museum in the Netherlands called the Museum of Edible Earth, which houses samples of soil that people are known to eat across the world and stories about how and why people eat them. This is Masharu, who sort of founded this group. Here they are at an exhibition of edible earth that they have set up at the World Soil Museum in Wageningen, the Netherlands. My first question to Masharu was, is it okay to eat soil? I would say no, <laughs> it's not safe. Often during the exhibitions, I also put a disclaimer that this is not recommended by food authorities and this is at your own risk. Uh, of course, nowadays, especially earth is very polluted with different toxins. For example, lead is often uh, found in earth and even in clays which are sold as edible products on the market. Uh, as well, it can be arsenic. And of course, there are a lot of living beings in the earth, which can become still be living in the stomach. <laughs> but at the same time, this is a practice which is widely spread across the globe. And in this sense, myself, I am taking a risk. This is a decision I make for myself. And I'm just raised in the culture where it is very common to go in the wood and pick up, for example, mushrooms or berries. Uh, people are used to eat from nature. That's where I come from, is Russia. And for me, still as a person born in a country with shops but no supermarkets, I still somehow feel more in peace with myself eating earth than eating particular things which are sold in the supermarket. <laughs> but this is a personal choice that I'm making and this is not necessarily mm, safe for everybody. When did you first hear about geophagy? Mm, well, I guess I started reading about it in right around 2012-2013 because I had myself cravings to eat uh, chalk and clay. And then I decided to check things online and I found it quite fascinating how much is written and how many people are interested in it and that there are the whole communities of chalk eaters or clay eaters online and that there is this whole, I would say, stigma connected to this topic. Uh, because of course health is one aspect, but also there is a lot of association of eating earth with poverty and low education and uh, all type of things that is gender uh, connected to it as well. And... Uh, yeah, I found this uh, whole whole theme is very um, controversial, but also very rich. And it made me think of taboos in society because I myself, when I started eating chalk, I was really doing it very secretly. And then uh, I also understood that a lot of people who practice this, they do it secretly from their families even. And then uh, creating a space where something uh, which is taboo, becoming open, and uh, it's possible to share it with others. For me, it felt very liberating. So apart from a personal urge to eat soil, and the fact that eating soil could sometimes be without harm, are there any benefits to eating soil? Does soil have anything to offer to the human body? Uh, first of all, about eating clay, clay is cleansing. So clay can clean the body and absorb toxins. 
And of course it can have side effects because clay can also take good things out of the body. For example, uh, people who eat a lot of clay sometimes are anemic and have lack of iron. And this can be that anemia is a reason why people want to eat clay, but it can also be the reason of eating too much clay because clay would take iron out of the body. So this cleansing ha can have both effects. And then, of course, there are some articles, scientific papers, which talk about eating or so also specifically focusing on eating clay as mineral supplementation. So Earth has such elements as iron, magnesium, zinc, calcium. This is what we also buy nowadays in the drugstore in pills. So who eats soil and where? Mashadu travels across the world looking for communities and cultures where eating soil is a thing. So I uh, traveled to different places where earth was sold uh, on the market, like mostly different types of clay. So I would say earth with no organic forms in it is sold as snacks or uh, some kind of edible products. Uh, but also in the places where unfortunately uh, there is a situation of hunger. For example, uh, recently on the news there was Madagascar and then Haiti is already for a while on the news visit. People eat mud cakes as a way to survive. So there is also this aspect as well. And this was practiced as well in Europe, for example, during Second World War. In Germany, people were eating uh, bread made partly out of torf. And there is still possible to find a patent for this bread online. <laughs> Borlik, fix us some coffee, will you? And try to make it taste slightly less like mud this time. Not easy, I'm afraid, Captain. Why is this? Because it is mud. <laughs> and this is not just far away places and indigenous communities. You can find soil-based edibles in your local supermarket. So called Western World, for example, the Netherlands. If you go to Eco Plaza, you also find earth as a food supplement. It is healing earth uh, called Lufos. It's coming from a German brand and they got a status of official food supplement. The same way if I go in Russia to a drugstore, I find the edible clay in tablets. But at the same time, there are a lot of also samples sold online, which are not having official status of supplement, but they're still sold as edible products and people are buying them to eat. And these are exactly the samples which are uh, warned about, which are the warnings about issued by food authorities. What are some of your favorite edible soils? I like different types. Where I come from, from Russia, I like Cambrian clay. From Uzbekistan, I like clay which is called Kisak. It's also green as Cambrian clay, but it's salty. I uh, like, so in Ghana, I traveled to Ghana, but also it's salt in the Netherlands. It's called Ailo, it's gray clay, and it's often smoked. So I like eat, eating bits and pieces of this. Uh, uh, there is a really nice snack in Indonesia, which is called Ampo, and this is a clay snack which is prepared with salt on the fire, and this is also very tasty. So Masharu is an artist. I thought it would be important to ask a bona fide soil scientist what they thought about eating soil, about geophagy. So if you say, in general, can I eat soil just from anywhere, I would say no. But soil is eaten by different people in different parts of the planet, for sure. Soil is a, is a biological active medium. So you have life in soils, that means also pathogens occur in soils like um, bacteria, uh, worms. So that can affect human health. Um, now, if you take that away, then uh, soil is, uh, I I if you have a clean soil, which does not have heavy metals, uh, then soil can pass your stomach and, uh, and your body uh, and perform things there, like it, it could take nutrients out or bring nutrients into your body. It, also animals uh, eat earth under specific conditions. There are various types of animals that do that. And that's also experience. So like there are parrots in the Amazon that eat toxic fruit, but compensate the toxicity of that fruit with clay they eat from very particular uh, strata in, uh, in, in the soil. So that's experience. And I think in humans that is probably the same, that people on a specific place 
place on specific moments by particular people of age or sex or uh, is beneficial and that could be pregnant women or elderly people or maybe young people but then on a specific place so a specific soil and that is traditional knowledge now if you then extrapolate that to any situation everywhere then you can run into problems Stefan is director of the World Soil Museum it's literally what it sounds like a museum with soil samples from across the world and a repository of all sorts of material related to soil science. The museum has been hosting this temporary exhibit on edible soils for the past few months. What I like about this exposition is that it highlights a completely different function of soil that people not so often think of. And what I like also, science is not so much about knowing for sure. It's about asking questions. Asking questions, trying to understand. And I think with this exposition, we provoke uh, asking questions and thinking and, 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 and provoke debate. And the interesting about soil as superfood or uh, edible earth, it's of course a bit provocative title, but it also uh, is food for thought because our food chain, 95% of the food that we eat uh, originates from the soil via plants and, and animals. But what about if we cut the food chain short and we just directly go to the nutrient source? That is at least already philosophical. It's an interesting question. And then we can think about, is it wise to eat soil? Is it wise to eat soil always? Um, what are the consequences of eating soil? That's all part of, of interesting scientific debate. And, uh, and, and I, based on this exposition, there are multiple uh, standpoints in that. But uh, yeah, I think also that that's also a pla well placed in a museum that you have, that you are challenged in your thinking. And I, th I think certainly this exposition does that.